Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbow Creation. So if you've been with me since the beginning, then you know that I've been stuck in a vicious cycle of fear, but that led me to remember the practice and the wisdom of surrender. And as of two weeks ago, I promised you guys that I would talk to you guys about what surrender means to me and give you guys a few tips about how to implement it in your guys' life. So let's get right to it. I should, I should have talked about it last week, so I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer. So what does surrender mean to me then? <laughs> That's kind of hard to say because every time I try to sit down, especially for example for this video and try to define it, I find that the definition just escapes me. But anytime I, I don't think about it too much and I just let it come to me, I find that it comes easier. And in that way, I feel like the universe is again perfect and it's irony because I feel like that's exactly what surrender is. It's realizing that it's a lot easier to go with the flow of life and with ease rather than to align yourself with control and, and effort. And in that way, I think that the Chinese finger trap is the perfect metaphor to explain surrender. So you guys should definitely check out my first ever animation of the Chinese finger trap and and see if it resonates with you, with you guys. But for the purposes of this video, I'll say that the thing about effort and control is that they're pregnant with the energies of fear, ego, and distrust that everything is going to be okay. Even though, even if okay doesn't necessarily end up being your definition of success. Surrender on the other hand is all about letting go and letting things come easy and doing whatever feels right and aligned with with your path. It's pretty much admitting that even though we might think we are, we are not almighty and we can't do our everything by ourselves and not everything is going to turn out exactly the way we want it. We because we're co-creators and that means that we have to work with the universe to have things manifest in our lives. And the sooner we do that, the sooner we start living a life that feels fulfilling to us because we start realizing that we don't have to figure everything out out by ourselves. Uh, we basically really just have to figure out what we want to do. In other words, what feels right to us and why. It's because it has to be connected to a deeper, deeper and selfless purpose. The universe will take care of the when, where, and how. And that's what I meant in my first video when I talked about creating space to allow intuition to come into my life and guide me towards what the next step should be. It was by doing that that I finally began to take steps to actually do YouTube. And I was given ins instructions as to how to do it, which was talking about the break that I took. But the thing I realized towards the end of my break and directly afterwards is that I should really work to to make that space, silence and time to reflect an integral part of my life instead of waiting until everything piles up on top of me and makes it so hard to continue that I have to take an extended break. But unfortunately, even though I had this realization, I didn't implement it these past four months because I let myself believe that my current reality wasn't, couldn't already be defined as success. And on top of that, I convinced myself that the only way I could get to success was through SEO, which was something that didn't feel natural at all to me and didn't feel aligned to my way of being. And so in that way, I was in indirectly telling myself that I trusted the external reality and conventions more than I trusted my inner voice and my inner reality, which I'll probably talk about this in another video, but whenever you go back on your own word or you find a way to convince yourself that your intuition isn't right, you're creating a schasm within yourself and th that makes it really hard to trust yourself and therefore to be able to do anything with ease. 
as part of that vicious cycle, I also started be to become overly focused on the future. Uh, and by doing that, and by doing that, I stopped enjoying what I was doing in the present because I thought it would never amount to anything. I started thinking that I would never be able to make enough money to live the life that I wanted and was completely blind to the fact that I already have exactly the life that I want. I can already work on my own time. I already work on things that interest me. I can already work outside if I want to, which <laughs> I love being outdoors, so I do. I'm already location independent. I'm already an animator. I'm already a digital artist. I'm already a YouTuber. Like It's all already is. It's not in the future. It's right now. And I just have to celebrate that fact. I have to stop believing that my happiness and my success is, isn't already here. But that's the other thing too, is that I started to focus too much on myself. I forgot that the reason I even switched from having a traditional career as a scientist to trying to find my own way as an artist was that I felt this deep inner call to share my thoughts and views of the world and my time here on earth through my art and through my work. And I wanted others to feel the same. I wanted to be an example that it's enough to just be. And, and equally as important, I wanted to learn and be inspired from other people who are also finding their own way, whatever that way may be, either, either as entrepreneurs or artists or whatever people are doing. Because people will always surprise you. You can't limit them and put them in boxes and only take inspiration for, from certain people or certain things. But since I had been allowing fear to overpower me, uh, my focus slowly started to shift towards what did I have to do for me to find success and for my businesses to expand and reach audiences. And since I started to be the focus, all those other things that I just listed about finding communion and inspiration in other people took the backseat. But what I find super interesting is that pretty much the moment I decided to face my fears and show fear that I wasn't afraid of it, these things started to come into my life as well as the energy and the clarity to continue on my path no matter how hard it gets. Because even though people think surrender is synonymous with inaction, it actually means inspired action. And the first time I heard that phrase was from this woman called Amanda Francis, who teaches on money manifestation and abundance, but really it applies to all parts of life. It was through her that I learned that action and inspired action are actually two completely different things, just the way that busyness and productivity are to completely different things. Action is doing things because you think you have to and it's doing things the way you're told by following the rules, by following convention, by following everything in the external world. Whereas inspired action is doing things because they just feel right, feeling a pull to talk to certain people or do certain things in a certain way, even though on the surface it doesn't seem like it connects to your deeper purpose or higher meaning, but trusting that it does and that the universe will eventually show you how. You'll know you're taking inspired action because things will start coming with ease. And that doesn't mean that there won't be challenges or hurdles because <laughs> as we all know, there definitely is going to be. But the thing is that those challenges and hurdles will start to energize and invigorate your efforts and your passions instead of leaving you in a heap of despair and not knowing what to do and feeling overwhelmed. And I think that's the beauty of surrender. It's letting things be easy. It's letting the universe show you the way. Okay, so now that we've defined surrender for ourselves and I've talked about some of the benefits that it could bring, let me give you guys some tips about how you guys can implement it in your lives, which I already kind of talked about by explaining to you guys the process that I had to go through to come back to surrender. But let me talk about it explicitly anyways. So tip number one is to create space. 
Carve time out for yourself every day if possible or as often as possible to reflect on how you're feeling, why you're feeling that way, where you want to go in the future and the steps that feel right to you to get there. Things like meditating, journaling, going outside, going for a walk, showering and exercising are all really common examples of how other people create space. But if you take anything from this video, it should be that you should do things that feel right to you. So, so go ahead and do that. If you feel like making yourself a nice meal, do that. If you feel like dancing, dance. If you feel like singing, sing. If you feel like staring out the window for two hours and daydreaming, go and do that. <laughs> It doesn't really matter as long as you get your mind to slow down and create space for intuition and intention to come into your life. Okay, so tip number two is that at the start of any big project or change in your life, ask yourself how it relates back to your deeper purpose and fight to have that in the forefront of your mind every step of the way. Reflect on it during the times that you set aside in, in step number one to create space. And remember, and this is especially true of creative work and creative people, that it's ultimately not just about you. And it may not even be, and it may not even be being created by you. <laughs> and last but not least, tip number three is to take time to ground yourself in the present as often as possible. Stop worrying about the future because if you don't, then you'll never stop worrying. <laughs> the future is always going to be some ominous presence. So you might as well just live in the present and live fully. Remind yourself that choosing to see, see things as mistakes and failures is the same thing as forgetting that the journey is the point. The journey is the destination and the journey is the only thing that can ever be. And that's it really. I think with those three things, you'll find that surrender comes into your life a lot easier. But if you ever feel stuck, just ask yourself if your thoughts and actions are being fed by fear or if they're being fed by trust. And remember that surrender is not the same thing as giving up. Giving up means accepting defeat, while surrender means accepting that success may not look the same th way you thought you wanted it to. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to. It means a lot to me and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out. Also comment down below what fear looks like to you. One of the reasons I even wanted to start YouTube was to start creating conversation and having conversation with you guys about topics like this. So I would be really interested to see what you guys had to say. And make sure to tune back in next week because like I said in one of my other videos, these things take time and I'm definitely still processing things. So I'm pretty sure that by next week, I'll have more to share with you guys. But until then, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time.